The next table lists a number of chemicals that are known to cause cancer, known as carcinogens. Luckily, most of the chemicals are linked with one or maybe two types of cancer, so they are fairly easy to remember. The biggest exception to that rule is cigarette smoke, which is linked to a large number of cancers and of course is by far the most common of these chemicals to be used. As with other tables, this information is very high yield and also well suited to memorization. The next table lists perineoplastic effects that are associated with neoplasms. I know that we've seen a lot of tables so far, but this particular table is very important. Unlike the others, where information is usually tested in a very straightforward way, perineoplastic syndromes often make for the very tricky test questions that you're likely to see. Perineoplastic syndromes typically occur when a tumor secretes a hormone in an unregulated manner, and that leads to a disturbance in the normal hormonal pathway. Although you can memorize the data in this table, that's really not enough. You really need an understanding of each of these hormones and their actions on the body in order to truly master the material. For example, let's do a practice question. Ready? A 50-year-old man presents to your office with confusion and irritability. Serum sodium is 126. You discover that the patient has been smoking two packs of cigarettes per day for 30 years. What is the likely diagnosis? See how tricky this can be? The answer is small cell carcinoma of the lung. Even if you remember that confusion and irritability are caused by hyponatremia, that only gets you halfway. You also need to remember that hyponatremia can be caused by SIADH, and that small cell carcinoma of the lung can lead to SIADH, and that smoking leads to small cell carcinoma. Next, let's talk briefly about SAMOMA bodies. Students often get confused about what exactly these are and why they're important. The important thing about SAMOMA bodies is that they are very distinct under the microscope, so they are easy to recognize. Also, they're only found in a few conditions which are listed here. You can remember this with the PSMM mnemonic that's listed here. The way this might come up on your exam is a question that describes some symptoms shows you a picture of a SAMOMA body and asks you to choose the illness. For example, if they describe what you think is a brain tumor and they show you a picture of a SAMOMA body, the answer has to be meningioma, since that's the only tumor that occurs in the brain that's associated with SAMOMA bodies. Alright, so we're almost done with neoplasia. First, let's talk about the epidemiology of cancer. There are two important things you need to take from this table. The first is the difference between incidence and mortality. Some cancers, like breast cancer in females and prostate cancer in males, are very common, but most of them are found at an early stage so that the mortality rates aren't that high. On the other hand, lung cancer has a much lower incidence, but mortality rate is much higher since these cancers are typically detected later and are harder to treat. The other important thing you need to know is that overall, cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States behind cardiovascular disease. Finally, let's discuss common metastases. As we've talked about before, metastases are usually a sign of advanced cancer and typically correspond to a high stage and a poor clinical prognosis. For reasons that aren't very well understood, certain sites in the body are common locations for metastasis, and certain tumors are more likely to metastasize to certain places. Generally speaking, this has to do with the ability of the cancer cells to survive in that area, but the specifics still need to be worked out. For your exam, these facts are very frequently tested, so it's important to learn them in depth. Let's start with brain mets. 50% of all brain tumors are actually metastases from some other primary site. If you see an image with a brain lesion, there are some clues about whether the image might be a metastasis. Brain mets are usually located at the gray-white matter junction, and they're often ring-enhancing on CT. Also, if there are multiple lesions, brain mets are much more likely than primary brain tumors. These can cause any number of neurological symptoms from headaches to seizures. As far as the tumors that typically go to the brain, you'll just need to memorize them. Lung, breast, kidney, and melanoma. The liver is the other most commonly involved organ for metastatic disease. 
This is mostly because all GI organs drain their venous blood into the liver, so GI malignancies commonly metastasize there, including colon, stomach, and pancreas. The last common site for metastasis is bone, especially the spine, pelvis, and ribs. Since bone mets are so much more common than primary bone tumors, any lesion in the bone should trigger you to think of a primary lesion somewhere else. Mets to bone come in two basic flavors, blastic and lytic. Blastic lesions cause the production of more bone, leading to increased bone density, as is the case with prostate cancer, shown here metastasized to the pelvis. On the other hand, lytic lesions cause the destruction of bone and are more common in lung cancer and in multiple myeloma. Since this excess bone resorption releases calcium, a common lab finding might actually be hypercalcemia. All right, let's finish with a question. Ready? A 45-year-old female who hasn't seen a doctor in 20 years presents with new onset seizures. On review of systems, she also notes a recent 20-pound weight loss and difficulty walking due to new onset hip pain. She has never smoked. Which gene is likely underexpressed in this patient? BCL2, BRCA, P16, or Herb B2? Now this is a tough one. New onset seizures in an adult should tip you off to a brain malignancy, as should a recent large weight loss. It could be a primary brain tumor, but there's a 50% chance that it's a metastasis. Add in the hip pain, and now we're also worried about a bone metastasis. She hasn't ever smoked, so it's not likely to be lung cancer. However, since the woman hasn't seen a doctor in 20 years, she probably hasn't had a mammogram. So, this is probably breast cancer that has metastasized to her brain and to her pelvis. Of the genes that are listed, only BRCA and HERB-B2 are associated with breast cancer. And since HERB-B2 is an oncogene, it would have to be overexpressed in this patient, not underexpressed. So the correct answer is BRCA. Don't worry if you don't know the genes yet. They really just need to be memorized. But you can see how all this information can be linked together in some pretty tricky ways. Great job. That wraps up the pathology section. As you can tell, there are a lot of details that you'll need to memorize, but don't forget about the important concepts and how all of these things might be tied together on your exam. Happy studying!